welcome to First Methodist Church. If you will, stand up as we start worship. We're going to sing a new song this morning, Lord's Prayer. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done. On earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done. On earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Sing that again. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done. On earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. And Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done. On earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us, forgive us, as we forgive the ones who sinned against us. Forgive them and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Let your kingdom come. Amen. Good morning, church. It's Advent season. We finally made it. You guys excited? I'm pumped. Are y'all excited over here in the youth? All right. All right. Are our adults excited? Yeah, all right. There we are. Good deal. I hope that this Advent season is sort of a breath of fresh air. It reminds us of the preparation of Christmas, preparing our hearts for the coming King. Amen. Amen. So with that, uh, we have our Advent wreath, and I'm going to invite the Hamill family to come forward uh, for the lighting of our first candle this morning.
Amen. Thank you, guys. I'm going to pray for us as we continue on into worship. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for today, so much for the expectation of you, Lord Jesus. We thank you that uh, there's excitement in the room, Lord. We pray your Holy Spirit would come as we come and worship you with all of our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. If you guys will stand up as we continue worship this morning.
Amen. At this time in the service, uh, we're going to go into a time of prayer. So if anyone has any prayer requests, uh, I forgot to mention at the beginning of the service, the cards for prayer requests are in the chairs in front of you. Uh, If you have any joys or concerns that you'd like to share with the church, that you'd like the church to be praying for, uh, you can write on those cards, write down any requests that you have, and I'll come and pick those up at this time. Also, we have a prayer request number up on the screen. You can text in your prayer requests uh, that way if you prefer the digital method of sending in prayer requests. Can I pick up any prayer requests? Do we have any of those? Any joys that anyone wants to share over the holidays, maybe? I I mean, I want to hear some joys. That's what I'm saying is somebody needs to share a joy. So anybody have any joys? Anybody? Yes. Thank you. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Always so good to see family. Yeah. Praise God. I'm glad they got to come in. Any other joys back here? Yeah. Awesome. Love that. Sounds like a fun Thanksgiving. We got some coming through the phone here. We've got a prayer request from uh, Buddy. He says, uh, daughter has shingles, an eight-month-old uh, grandson has RSV. So we've been praying for healing for those two right there. Who will join with me in praying for healing for this family? Yeah, thank you guys so much. We've got a prayer request from a mom that is battling cancer. Who will be praying for this prayer request? Just lifting up this mom in your prayers this morning. Thank you. Amen, yeah. Uh, Peyton back here at the sound booth got an internship at KGNC radio station in Amarillo. That's awesome. Congratulations. Yeah. Great job. We'll be praying for Peyton as he starts this new uh, journey, this new internship. Awesome. This is for the blessing of a new life to come. We'll be praying for this. It's exciting. Yeah. Amen. We want to lift up Bobby Griffin. Uh, Some of you know Guileen Griffin, who works in the kitchen sometimes. Uh, Her husband, Bobby, uh, had gallbladder surgery yesterday. So we'll be praying for uh, Bobby. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Amen. This one just says, joyful for resting in the Lord over the Thanksgiving break. Anybody else joyful for that? Yeah? (laughs) Amen. Amen. All right. Well, I'm going to leave some time for you guys to lift up your prayer request if anything is on your heart. I'm going to leave a time of silence for you to lift up your prayer requests, and then I'll uh, close us out in prayer. Lord Jesus, we are so thankful. So thankful to have time to spend with family, uh, to catch up in conversation, to give and receive love in this time. We thank you for um, all that is family, even the craziness of family, Lord Jesus. And we thank you that we have the opportunity to rest in you. And Jesus, this morning, I pray we would take advantage of that opportunity just to rest in you, just to rest in your presence, Lord. Especially going into this season of anticipation for Christmas when you entered the world as a baby. Lord Jesus, we're so thankful. We just ask that your presence would be among us today. We want to lift up our hearts. We want to lift up also the prayer requests that are on our hearts, Lord, the concerns Uh, the difficult circumstances, Lord Jesus, and the joys. 
Lord, we know that you celebrate with us. We know that you mourn with us. So Jesus, we just hand it over to you. We thank you for your love. We thank you that your love is never ending. And I pray this morning we would just come to receive your love and give you love in return, Jesus. Thank you for the communion that you have with us, the community that you have with us. We want more of you, Jesus. We want more of you in our life. We want more of you in our church. We want more of you in our city. Jesus, we just want more of you, more of your presence, more of your spirit. Walk with us and dwell with us. Lord, we invite you here. And we thank you so much for who you are and so much for what you have done. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'm going to invite the children to come forward for children's time. Good morning. How's everyone? Good. good. Have a good Thanksgiving, Eli? Yeah. Did you make it home with your dog? Yeah. <laughs> Barely. <laughs> okay. Have a question for you guys. What did you see different in the sanctuary, in the fellowship hall today when you came in? Did it look different? Does it look different today than any other Sunday? Look back behind us. Look up there. I helped decorate the Christmas tree. Say that again. I helped decorate the Christmas tree. Nice. Yeah. What does all the what do all the decorations mean? Hanging of the greens. Yeah, but what does it mean? What's fixing to happen? Christmas. And Jesus is gonna Christmas. Or Jesus was born on that day. Absolutely. I knew I could count on you. Okay, real quick, we're going to read Luke 21, 25, 20, or Luke 21, 25, 27, and 28. Y'all ready? There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars. At the time they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things happen, begin to, t- when these things begin to take place, stand up, lift up your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Now, it's official. We have entered Christmas time. We're going to start hearing on the radio and on television. They're going to start counting down. 25 days till Christmas. 24 days till Christmas. 23 days till Christmas. No, but I'm just using that as an example. (laughs) Yeah, so we're counting down. There are lots of signs today, right? On billboards and on the radio and on TV telling us that Christmas is just around the corner. So it's giving us time to prepare for Christmas. But a long, long time ago, 2,000 years ago, do you think there were any signs that Jesus was going to be born? Do you think there were billboards put up saying Jesus is going to be born? No. There was no radio and TV, so they couldn't have told us that way. So there was really nobody preparing us for that or advertising that. But a Savior was born, was born in a stable, right? Many people were surprised. But as the word spread, some people remembered that the prophet had told them that God was going to send us a Savior. And they knew that this baby that was born in the stable... That was God keeping his promise. Christmas is not the only wonderful time to celebrate Jesus. It's also a time to remember that Jesus promised that he would come again. You're right. But he, (laughs) Jesus promised that he would come again. So we... Don't, we're not going to read much about that in the newspaper, or we're not going to see it on television. But Jesus told us to be prepared and watch for him. 
We just read about that in Luke 21. So as we look forward to Christmas Day, we also look forward to the day that Jesus will come again. Y'all lit the candle of hope today, this morning. So that gives us hope of his return. Okay, so be ready. Be on the lookout. Have your hearts ready. So Christmas is not only the time to celebrate his birth, but it's time to celebrate and look forward to his return. Let's pray. Church, will you pray with us? Dear Lord, we thank you for keeping your promise to send a Savior. We also thank you for the promise that he will turn, return again and take us to our heavenly home. Amen. Thanks, guys. Now I'm going to read the scripture for this morning. Matthew 2, 13 through 15 reads, When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So he got up, took the child and his mother during the night, and left for Egypt, where he stayed until the death of Herod. And so was fulfilled when the Lord had said through the prophet, Out of son, or out of Egypt I called my son. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thanks be to God. Well, happy new year. Right? You guys know what I'm talking about? I didn't actually know um, what I was talking about until Rick let me know that this is the first day in the Christian calendar. So this marks the new year for the Christian calendar. Who knew that? Smart. Nice. I didn't. I saw it and I was like, happy new year. Rick, are you okay? Um, but yeah, this is where we celebrate. Uh, the Christian new year is, is celebrated on the first day. Sunday of Advent, which is today. And, and really, it's appropriate. We start the Christian year in anticipation for the coming King. Is that not cool? That's pretty cool. I liked it. I liked it. So I was like, you know what? I'll start with Happy New Year, and I'll get some weird looks just as I got, so thank you. Uh, so <laughs> during this season of Advent, we're anticipating the coming of Jesus the Messiah. We're anticipating really what that coming means, because Jesus changes everything. And some of us, uh, we are making plans for Christmas. Anybody have travel plans for Christmas already? Some of us. Well, that's a, alarmingly few of us have Christmas plans. Or are we just staying here? Is that, is that the plan? Who's just staying here? That's probably the smart thing to do. I've heard plenty of travel stories. One, just in this last week, Mikey, would you, would you want to share the, the story of what was referenced up here about your dog just for, for the congregation to hear. I know I'm putting you on the spot, but I laughed really loud when I heard this story. Our dog got sprayed by a skunk. That's pretty much it. <laughs> right? Is that not funny. crazy? I laughed. <laughs> no, our stuff smells like skunk. Yeah, so I know. I'm sorry. It's that. great. No, it's fine. It's yeah, fine. Just okay, a lot of laundry. Right. Yeah, I'm sure. But Carrie's really good at laundry, so. Good, good. yeah. So I should be, yeah. too. I should be. You are, I'm sure. Okay, good. Yeah, so apparently their dog is city dog, right? Yes. And thought the skunk was a cat, maybe. And uh, the skunk was not a cat. <laughs> and it's right, the dog. <laughs> I shouldn't be laughing. I just, it brought me joy this morning. <laughs> it just cracks me up. But many of us, we have stories of travel that don't really go as planned. Has anybody traveled on the road and something has definitely not gone as planned? Uh, Liz and I, we, uh, this Christmas, are traveling to Austin, and everybody in here knows if you've been to Austin how easy it is to travel around Austin. Oh, it's not? Okay. <laughs> it's definitely not. And so Liz, normally when we drive, Liz navigates, and I drive, unless I'm getting real tired, because I love family, spending time with family, but I hate traveling. Puts me in the grumpiest of moods. Anybody else like that? Just grumpy when you travel? That's what I'm talking about. Hey, me too. And so Liz, she'll normally navigate because if I'm, navigate, if I'm navigating, that means I have to speak. And if I'm driving, that means I can just be silent and listen, which is like my thing. I like doing that. And so Liz will navigate. And oftentimes we'll just miss exits. 
Whether it's her fault or my fault, I'm not saying. <laughs> Either way, okay, we'll miss exits. Do you guys just love when you miss an exit? In Amarillo, you're like, okay, fine. I'll just get off on Bell, right? In Austin, you're like, <laughs> we're not getting back till January. I mean, it's, <laughs> we're, we're gone. We're lost. It's over. From that point on, it's over. Now, when we read about the Christmas story in the Gospels, and really we're going to be in the book of Matthew uh, throughout Advent, we realize pretty quickly that the journey of Christmas had these moments of rerouting, which is what this sermon series is about. Because many of the, the stops that Jesus and their family, they take place on the way to the Christmas day, on the way from Christmas, they're not planned. They're not what's expected. And that happens to us all the time. It wasn't a journey, the Christmas journey wasn't a journey from point A to point B directly, and it surely wasn't a smooth journey. Rather, it was treacherous. It was a journey of missed exit. It was a journey of detours, a journey of dangers, a journey that was filled with stress, filled with unplanned guests, filled with unplanned cities and places that they didn't expect. It was a constant rerouting on the road to Christmas. And if you're following along, just starting in Matthew reading that, or in Luke reading about the birth of Jesus, you're like, where are we going? Why are they going to Egypt? Why are they going to this place, you know? But if you read the whole of the Bible and you see the overarching theme of it all, you see that it was hinted at why they're going to Egypt, why they're going to Bethlehem, why they have to be in these certain specific places at that time. And it's really cool to see. And so hopefully today, uh, what we're going to do is sort of connect the dots of Christmas. We're going to be rerouting the road to Christmas all the way up until Christmas Day uh, when we light the big candle in the middle. Now, we often, we have this idea of how Christmas should go, but rarely does it ever unfold exactly how we plan. And some of us who are planners do not like when it doesn't go exactly how we plan. And I'm betting that this year is going to be no different, so just get ready. The question is, will we be able to reroute on the road to Christmas? Are we going to be able to do that when our plans go awry? Will we be able to navigate the roads that we don't expect to be on? Will we be able to navigate all of these unexpected plans and unexpected people that show up at Christmas? Charlie, uh, over the Thanksgiving break, I don't know if you guys heard this story, uh, Kara, you guys know uh, Charlie's daughter, Kara, had her thumb like smashed in a door, you know, in the hinge of a door. And an unexpected guest at Christmas, apparently his father-in-law just invites random people over to Thanksgiving dinner. Any, you have people in your family. I saw some nodding back there. Just invites random people. And this random person that he invited to Thanksgiving din, uh, dinner was an ER nurse. And so it worked out, right? Isn't that crazy? Anyway, I'll get back to the sermon. Sorry. I'm so off track this morning. <laughs> so as we start down the road of Advent, here we go. We're back. We're going to be looking at many different places mentioned in the Christmas story. This sermon's title is Exiled in Egypt. Why were they in Egypt? How did they get there? We'll be hanging out in the Gospel of Matthew each week during this season. Matthew has taken us on a journey, and he's laid out a map as to how we got to Christmas. But again, it's a journey that we didn't expect, but it was a journey that was intentionally laid out by God, all the way through, intentionally laid out by God. In the drama of the events unfolding, each character, they face challenges along the way, but we see that God protects Jesus and his family all the way through. And so I want to get back to the text this morning and read uh, from Matthew 2, 13 through 15. Uh, If you have your Bibles or uh, over the next few weeks, over the next few weeks of Advent, if you just want to read through the Gospel of Matthew, just to sort of get at where we're going, uh, that would be awesome. If you have your Bibles, just turn to uh, Matthew chapter 2, 13 through 15. It says this, When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said, take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So he got up, took the child and his mother during the night and left for Egypt where he stayed until the death of Herod. And so was fulfilled what the Lord had said through the prophet, out of Egypt I called my son. So right there, in the middle of the Christmas story, we see this major detour take place as Joseph is told to flee with 
his family with Jesus to Egypt, a rerouting that takes them on a journey that they didn't expect. So let's go back to Matthew's gospel because as I've already said, Matthew is laying out this journey to Christmas where the other gospels, the other gospels, they start with in Mark, they start with John the Baptist and, and sort of his story going forward in the book of John. It starts really at the beginning of time. And in Luke, uh, it starts with the birth and you get a lot more details about the birth. Matthew starts in an interesting way. Anybody know how Matthew starts? It's a genealogy. What's that about? Matthew starts with the genealogy or the line of Jesus from the beginning to Jesus. All these names, all these people put in chapter one. Most of chapter one is a genealogy. And really, Matthew only briefly talks about the birth. The last section of the first chapter starts with, this is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. And then chapter two starts with, after Jesus was born. Really, we just get a small section about the birth of Jesus in Matthew. But Matthew spends a whole chapter, nearly a whole chapter, on the genealogy. And the reason he does this, I believe, is twofold. He's trying to answer these two questions. One, who is Jesus? And two, where did Jesus come from? Matthew hammers into our minds that Jesus is the son of David, the son of Abraham, And it ends with the sentence of whom Jesus was born, who is called the Christ. Off the rip, he's telling us, this is the Messiah. This Jesus, who you're wondering about, who is this Jesus? He's the Messiah. He's the Christ, the Savior of the world. And really his name, Jesus, the name itself means the one who saves. And in the birth story, we see that his name shall be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. Matthew is giving us a roadmap to Christmas, and it begins with the baby who is the one who saves. That is the baby that is somehow God with us. This is Jesus. But where did he come from? That's where the genealogy comes in. And all of chapter two is spent answering this question. We get all kinds of different geographic locations in the beginning of Matthew. Bethlehem in Judea, the land to the east, Jerusalem, Egypt, Ramah, Galilee, and Nazareth. Matthew is giving us a roadmap of all the places that they go to in these first two chapters. Who is Jesus? Where did he come from? He's giving us, really, he's giving us the theme of the whole gospel that is to come. He's giving us a taste of where we're headed in the gospel of Matthew. It might seem that it's a journey of these random places, of these detours and reroutings, but it's laid out in a way that's absolutely amazing. God knows what he's doing in this Christmas story, and it's so cool to follow along and see it. There's these two chapters, these two beginning chapters. They're really like the prelude to a great symphony. We get to hear the basic melody that's about to come, Themes that have already been introduced in the Old Testament are being built upon as Jesus is born. We hear the prelude and anticipate the beautiful music that's to come in these first two chapters of Matthew. And here in our text, we see that there were these wise men from the east that have come to pay their respects to the newborn king, as they call him. We'll hear more about this story in another week. There are all types of traditions surrounding these mysterious visitors. Uh, They've sometimes been called kings and have been depicted in various paintings throughout the century. But Matthew, he doesn't mention the three kings. Rather, he's focusing, his focus in this book really is on two kings and two kingdoms. He's focusing on King Herod and King Jesus. The narrative begins with the question from these men from the east. Where is the one who is born king of the Jews? Seems like such an innocent question. But it was asked from the wrong person, Herod. You see, Herod, his background, he was an Edomite who had overthrown the ancestors of these priest kings that were from the Jews. He was given quite a bit of power and he ruled for more than 30 years in Palestine. He brought peace to the area. But it was a brutal peace built on heavy taxes, slave labor, and relentless and unmerciful elimination of anyone who opposed him. Herod himself, because he was so fearful of people who would oppose him and people who would overthrow him, killed his wife and killed his sons. The saying was that it was safer to be one of Herod's pigs than it was to be one of his sons. 
So when he heard that there was going to be a birth of the one who was going to be called king of the Jews, Herod acted swiftly. Because Herod wanted to be king of the Jews, but he wasn't a proper descendant of David. He really wasn't a Jew. So an angel of the Lord, in response to this, came to Joseph and told him to flee to Egypt, to go to Egypt. He warns Joseph in a dream. Immediately, the family gets up and takes the 80-mile journey from Bethlehem to Egypt, most likely settled in the area of Alexandria where there's a population of many exiled Jews. And this was the rerouting that they had no idea that they were gonna take. I mean, Jesus was just born, and then in a dream, an angel tells Joseph to go 80 miles to Egypt of all places. And this is not the route that they expected for their lives. They didn't want it, but they had to make the best of it. I mean, this was a message from God to go. And I bet there are things in your life that are the same way. And you're having to reroute your road to Christmas, maybe. But Matthew is intentional in telling us this part of the story. Why would he give us these details? Why is Matthew highlighting these details in the story of Christmas? He's intentional in this. There's a deeper reason. God always has a deeper intention and deeper reason for telling us and revealing things to us. Egypt isn't just this random country that Jesus and his family flee to, right? Egypt was wrapped up in the story of the Jewish people. This really was an intentional, uh, this really was intentional on God. It was Egypt that the first Joseph, do you guys remember the first Joseph? There's Joseph who was, Uh, the father of Jesus, right? And then there was Joseph who was the 12th son, right, of Jacob that went to Egypt. If you remember the story of Joseph, he was sold into slavery uh, by his family into Egypt. This was long before Jesus. He spent several years unjustly in prison, but God called him and gave him a place of great honor in Pharaoh's court. And Joseph rightly interpreted the reason that this happened so that God could use him ultimately to protect his family and to protect uh, what would be the the coming of the Jewish people from this great famine. And we we see the same thing in Jesus. This is what's so cool about the story of Jesus because we see so uh, so many things that are similar in the story of Jesus and the story of the beginning of the Jews. All the way throughout the Bible, we see this similar theme leading up to Jesus. Uh, Jesus will ultimately protect the people of God, but not just God's people. He came to offer salvation for the whole world. But that wasn't uh, just part of the story of Egypt. Later, the people of God, uh, back in that time of the first Joseph, they fell into slavery in Egypt. They were brutally treated. And it was in this time that Egypt, in Egypt, that God called Moses to free the people. You guys remember the story of Moses? Uh, to free people from this brutal uh, slavery of Pharaoh, the great exodus of the people from Egypt, of God's people into the promised land. And so when Matthew relays the story of Jesus and his family going to Egypt, we see the theological implications of this, is that Jesus identifies with his people's heritage and his people's past. He knows what it means to have to flee from this corrupt government, this corrupt ruler, this brutal dictator. He knows what it feels like to be a refugee. He identifies with their pains and with their grief. And Matthew is also making the point that in Jesus, the anticipated salvation of God's people has started. Amen? The anticipation of this great salvation, the anticipation of this great Messiah that would come and bring salvation to all of God's people has come. It has started. Here we have the new exodus. The ultimate road to salvation is being paved in Jesus. God is rerouting his people to this better road because they couldn't do it on their own. And so he sent a savior in Jesus, a better salvation. Jesus will guide them on this new way. They lost their way in the first exodus. Remember, they just got lost in the desert for 40 years because of their disobedience to God. But here we have a better exodus in Jesus. When Matthew, he uses a quote from the Old Testament book of Hosea to remind us of this. He says in Hosea 11:1, 1, out of Egypt, I called my son. It was already planned from the beginning, this Jesus that would come. The stories of the Old Testament the prophecies of God, everything that has been spoken about the salvation of his people 
has been fulfilled in Christ Jesus and is being fulfilled in Christ Jesus in you right now. He's the ultimate rerouting. Without Jesus, there's no reason or purpose for this journey that we're on called life. But Jesus reroutes our life. He reorients our life. He gives us purpose and he gives us direction, healing our past mistakes, giving purpose to the pain and grief, giving us hope, the candle of hope, giving us hope for the future, giving us peace for the future, giving us joy for the journey and giving us love. Thanks be to God that we have been called out of this exile in Egypt. Jesus is the savior and he's born and God is with us. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for being our salvation. In you, we have nothing. Or without you, we have nothing. In you, we have everything, Lord Jesus. And so we just pray that you would come, that you would be Emmanuel, that you would be God with us, that you would be Jesus, the one who saves God. We thank you. In the story of your birth, Lord, there are reflections of everything that has come before. And in your life, all the prophecies have been fulfilled. And in your death and resurrection, Lord Jesus, we are saved. And we thank you for that, Lord. We're so thankful. Jesus, this morning as we go from here, this morning as we begin to wrap up, our service, our time together. Lord, remind us of what you are doing in our life. Remind us of what you've done in our life, Lord. You have redeemed your people. Thank you for your redemption, Jesus. God, we want to be so obedient to you. From this exile out of Egypt that you brought us from, this exile out of this slavery to sin that you brought us from, that only you could bring us from, Lord. I pray that we wouldn't get lost because of our disobedience in some desert, Lord. But Jesus, we would follow you, God, our pillar of smoke, our pillar of fire through the desert into the promised land that you have called us to dwell in with you for eternity. And so Jesus, this morning, if we haven't said yes to you in a long time, Lord, we say yes again. We ask you to come back into our hearts. We ask you to fill our life because in you there is everything. And without you there is nothing, Jesus. Thank you for the hope that you have brought to us through your birth, Jesus. And thank you for the hope that you leave with us because of your death and resurrection. We live into that today, Jesus. It's in your name, amen. If you guys would stand up as we sing, we're going to continue worship and sing God with us. You've come to bring peace, to be in love, to be nearer to us. You've come to bring life. To be a light, to shine brighter and also in man. You are God with us. Our deliverer, you are Savior. In your presence we find our strength. with us 
you've come to be hope to this world for your honor name you've come to take sin to bear a shame and to conquer the grave oh amen you will and God will We find our strength over everything, our redemption, God, with us. You are God with us. You are here, you are holy, we are standing in your glory. You are here, you are holy, we are standing in your glory. You are here, you are holy, we are standing in your glory. Amen. You guys may be seated. I'm going to invite the ushers to come forward uh, as we continue in worship, the giving of our tithes and offerings. Uh, just some announcements as uh, we're passing the bags around. We have Angel Tree uh, still in the back, still available for you to participate in. Again, Angel Tree is really our chance as a church uh, to come together to adopt uh, a kid, a child from around this area who most likely will not get the same Christmas that we're used to and be able to provide uh, some toys for them so that they can have uh, a good Christmas. So if that's something that you are wanting to be a part of, uh, information for that is on the Angel Tree in the back. You can also go to our website, firstmethodist.church, uh, and go to the tab that is titled Angel Tree. All of those are gonna be due back here. I think we're putting them all back here uh, by December 4th. Uh, so if that's something that you're doing or something that you want to do, December 4th is the deadline for that. Uh, this year, we're also having a blue Christmas service, Sunday, December 18th at 6 p.m. Uh, we've got our uh, spiritual, no, um, our pastoral care pastor, uh, Pastor Chris Enoch, who has been on our staff for a little while, and he's going to be uh, helping lead this Blue Christmas. This is something uh, for people who have lost someone in this time of the uh, Thanksgiving and, and Christmas season. Uh, it's just a place to gather together to remember those people that we've lost uh, and really just to reflect on God and his goodness and still in our life. Uh, so that, if that's something that you'd like to be a part of. That's going to be Sunday, December 18th at 6 p.m. Uh, just some information about our Christmas Eve and Christmas Day services. Uh, again, you're invited to join us. We'll, we'll have three different services. There'll be two happening at four o'clock, one in here, one in the sanctuary. If you're uh, looking for more of a modern Christmas Eve service, you can come to this one at four o'clock. Uh, more of a traditional, you can go to the one in the sanctuary at four o'clock. And then we'll have another service at six o'clock in the sanctuary if you'd like to 
uh, be a part of that, you are invited to come. Also, our generosity response cards that we've been uh, kind of talking about over the past few weeks, we're still turning those in. And so if you haven't turned those in, if you're looking to turn those in, if you're still praying about the generosity response cards, uh, you can fill those out. Uh, you can hand them to me at the end of the service. I'll take them to where they need to go. Um, just as a family, be praying about that, um, thinking through that as well. Um, so if you will stand and just receive this benediction. This morning, really throughout the whole Christmas season, we're building on each week. And so while we spoke about uh, hope, this was the Sunday of hope, this was the day of hope, uh, everything will be built on this hope, the joy, the peace, the love, and uh, the Christ candle at the end, all built on this hope that we have, the hope that we have because of what Jesus has done and the hope that we have because of what Jesus will do. And so in that, I pray that during this Advent season, you would go and invite people to come experience that hope that we have in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. Go in his peace today.